Look, I was so disturbed about this today because it's not just that I agree with every word you said in that speech and I watched the full thing and there's nothing out of context, there's nothing we haven't shown, you don't drop in some big anti-vax message somewhere because you talk about the fact you're from a family of scientists and you're double vaccinated yourself. Uh, but what's so shocking is it seems like now, David, social media companies are against you if you question the COVID orthodoxy when it comes to issues like vaccine passports. Yeah, that's right. I mean, the, the, as you said, the, uh, the, the reason given, I think, was scientific misinformation, which, frankly, is defamatory. Um, when, I, when I heard this uh, from Big Brother Watch, they called me up and said this had happened. I thought, well, did I, did I say something out of place? Did I misspeak or, or say something wrong? So I went through it line by line. And you know, every single scientific assertion in it has got data behind it. I mean, some of it from Public Health England, let alone, you know, let alone uh, Oxford researchers and so on. So uh, what's happened, obviously, is their algorithms have thrown up this talking about vaccine passports uh, and a uh, one of their staff has taken it upon themselves to strike this out. Now, I think you know, people should remember this is a central controversy uh, in Parliament at the moment. The government's idea that they might bring in vaccine certification is opposed by a large number of people. So it's a central part of our democratic debate. And under no circumstances should you shut down one half of Democratic way. I never said, for example, um, that uh, Jeremy Corbyn's speeches should be censored, even though I disagree with nearly all of them. Uh, it, it's just wrong in a democracy. And and Google and and uh, and uh, YouTube uh, don't seem to understand that. They seem to be tin eared when it comes to that. You know, and, and it's really important because you know. In, in, a, in a few months, the government's almost certainly going to try and pass some legislation, giving them more powers to censor people. Yeah, exactly, which might come from a good place of wanting to stop people being abused on social media, but it's actually terrifying when it comes to civil liberties and what type of speech can be controlled. But, you know, David, I feel very strongly that no San Francisco-based tech company should be censoring a British MP, a British journalist or a British broadcaster full stop. Or, or just a British citizen. I mean, somebody has said already, I think, that, you know, had it not been uh, Big Brother Watch, had it not been uh, a well-known member of Parliament, we might not have got quite such a rapid response and correction, as it were. You know, it's, you know, it's, the point is, free speech belongs to every citizen. It doesn't belong to me, it doesn't belong to the government, it doesn't belong to any, uh, any platform. It belongs to the citizens. It's what, at the start of that speech, if you've seen it all, you'll know, but just for your viewers, the start speech is all about the importance of freedom. It's about yeah. why it's fundamental to what we are, you know, what it, how it's made us what we are. Uh, and you take it away, you know, you take, even in slow degrees, you take it away and you erode the nature of the country, you erode what you're handing on to your children in the future. Uh, and so it's incredibly important. And you know, I, I just wonder, I mean, in fact, I know, I was going to say, I wonder what would happen if it hadn't been somebody well-known speaking for an organisation. Yeah, well, you'd have no chance. You'd have no chance. And, and we've seen lots of individuals be booted off these platforms. And you're right, it's only the people who can fight back. So the example of Sky News Australia and my former radio station, Talk Radio, they were able to fight back because they had big organisations behind them. But if you're an individual, you're screwed, to be honest, if, if YouTube want you, you gone because you don't share the same views as the World Health Organisation. Yeah. And, David, that shocked me, too, you know, the fact that they pointed out uh, YouTube when they wrote this letter to Big Brother Watch. YouTube doesn't allow claims about COVID-19 vaccinations that contradict expert consensus from local health authorities or the World Health Organization. Now, I'm sorry, that is completely wrong, because, remember, it was the World Health Organization uh, that in the early days of the pandemic failed to respond to the shocking Chinese cover-up of coronavirus, which I believe is one of the biggest cover-ups of all time conducted uh, by the Chinese Communist Party. And also, their health advice has changed throughout this pandemic. Remember, it was the World Health Organization at one point saying, don't wear masks, then they said you should wear masks. So surely the job of politicians, the job of journalists is to actually 
challenge these big organizations. And if companies like YouTube will not allow that, we're entering a really dystopian, disturbing world. Yeah, I mean, I, I, as you say, I mean, one of the things where they took uh, things down was early comments saying this might have come from a laboratory escape. You know, I yeah. mean, uh, six months ago, they that was that all. was that, they banned it. That was that was the domain of madmen. You know, <laughs> that's how they saw it. Yeah, you were uh, conspiracy uh, theorist. And that's the trouble with these things. And I think I'm not I'm not sure I may have misremembered this, but I think they actually took down one one Nobel laureate who who made this comment, you know, Nobel science, uh, a, a Nobel Prize winning scientist. So so putting themselves up as being able to do that is is, is dangerous anyway, and particularly when you're dealing with new problems. You know, if you're dealing, I mean, COVID's a new problem for the world at large, and you know people are going to make mistakes. I don't blame. Chris Whitty or, or, or Professor Valance, if they make mistakes in something like this, oh, sure, if it's been an engineering problem which you could have solved 50 years ago, you blame them. But when they make mistakes, but what does have to happen is challenge. You know, It absolutely has to be challenged. And, and it's not just here, across the whole world, it has to be challenged because much of the data will fall to pieces when you do challenge it. And that's why democracies are more powerful than totalitarian states. It is as simple as that. It's the power of challenge, the power of argument. And guess what? The most important challenge is the unpopular one. Free speech only matters when you disagree with it. That's the whole point of it. You know, if 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 you know your free speech is everything I agree with, I'm I'm not being very virtuous allowing you the free speech. You know, it's absolutely the most important when it's unpopular, and very much when it's an unpopular minority. Totally. You know, I, but look, it's always the left, and it's always liberal organisations uh, that tend to want to censor the centre right or right wing organisations. Because to use that point, David, I believe that the insulate Britain criminals are terrorists. I believe what they're doing is tantamount to terrorism. I don't want social media to take down their accounts, however, and I've given them a platform on my show to try and explain what they're doing, because to mm. me, they expose themselves. And I think it's shocking now that the sort of puritanical censorship is always coming from the liberal left. Yeah, there's, you know, there's no intolerance like liberal intolerance. <laughs> you know? and, 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 of course, what it's driven by very often is a sort of sense of um, uh, almost a sanctimonious sense of being superior. Yeah. Uh, and, it's re and, it's re and it's reinforced by echo chambers. You know, no matter wherever you are, if, if there's a sort of echo chamber reflecting it, everybody thinks uh, more and more thinks they're right. I mean, I, I used to run into this in in Brussels when, when I was uh, Europe minister and when I was Brexit minister. You know, you, you, you come into a whole population of people who've never met with challenge, uh, and, it, and it just distorts their worldview, you know. It's, it's why I reiterate time and again, you know, freedom is so important. Now, all the freedoms, freedom of speech, yep. freedom of association, Definitely. freedom of action, uh, all those things are, are vitally important to, the, well, to all the values, the civilised values, the happiness of people, they're all undermined if you take freedom away. Uh, and, you know, and the trouble is, you see, that, I mean, freedom doesn't always disappear in a, in a revolution. It doesn't, you know, or, or, or a government being overthrown. It can disappear by degrees, you know. And then getting it back takes forever. I mean, in the Second World War, yeah, in the Second World War, you know, they had uh, rationing and um, identity cards and all, you know, possibly for good reason. And then, you know, do you know when they went? I mean, well, some of them went very late, but the, the most of them didn't go until 1952, seven years after, because governments, ha you know, they get the power, they hang on to it, you know. And you can almost hear, if you, if you ever watch Yes Minister, you can almost hear Sir Humphrey saying, you know, well, Minister, you might need that power next year. You know, if this goes wrong again, you might need... And so and nobody, nobody gives back power to people. So it's very important to fight these battles every single time. And, the, and it's not just government. The bigger the oligarchy, the bigger the monopoly, the more dangerous it is. And that's why, you know, the, the, the Cal effectively the California monopolies, the Facebooks, the, the Googles, uh, the Microsofts, uh, you know, the, even the Apples. I mean, Apples are a little, a little bit better behaved in this respect, but, but they're all big monopolies and you must always challenge them and you must always restrict 
the amount of power they can exercise over ordinary people because they'll exercise it for what they think is a good cause, but actually almost always turns out to be a bad one. Well, look, shame on YouTube, but you're never censored here on GB News. David Davis, thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you. A real pleasure. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favourite shows and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.